D and Kelly versus the Golden Don and Elisha Crowley. Modern Enochian magic is a remarkable and tidy self-referential system of visionary magic. Both of these magical environments are populated by spiritual beings whose names are drawn from five grids of lettered squares received by D and Kelly during a series of angelic communications during the third period of their magical operations. Both the elemental and the celestial magical environments are accessed by intoning one or more of 19 calls which are chanted in an angelic language that was given to the Elizabethan magicians under breathtaking and extraordinary circumstances during the last months of their angelic magic workings. The visionary labor of many postmodern Enochian explorers was well repaid, for we soon discovered that despite our very limited access to the original text this kind of magic actually worked. The technique used to receive visions such as these is called scrying. The Golden Dawn and Crowley often refer to the practice as traveling in the spirit vision. Scrying is, quite simply, the ability to put oneself in touch with one's own psychic senses. In magical operations the scrying session is usually preceded by a formal ceremony designed to put the magician in an altered state of consciousness. Naturally, some of us proved more talented than others. Art lovers and movie fans make particularly good candidates for Enochian vision magic for they see with the romantic's eye and already possess a vast memory bank of evocative landscapes archetypal characters, and supernatural beings. Skilled at communicating through a vocabulary of images and visual metaphors. But even the least imaginative of us, in short order, learned to develop our own visionary skills that became increasingly honed by our repeated work with the system. There is no question that the Enochian magic procedures and techniques developed by the Golden Dawn and Crowley embody a highly effective system of magical working that, if properly applied, can become an integral component in the modern magician's program of personal self-development. To modern ceremonial magicians, Enochian magic appears at first glance to enjoy a comfortable compatibility with our world of pentagram rituals, hexagram rituals, tarot cards, trees of life, cabalistic path workings, chakra work, invocations, god forms, and spirit evocations. This compatibility, however, has been, for the most part, contrived and jerry-rigged. This fact should not diminish in our respect for the wonderfully effective system that Golden Dawn and Crowley have bequeathed to us. But it has prompted many of us to examine in greater detail the surviving D and Kelly material that has now become more readily available to the serious student. What we discovered is an overwhelmingly large body of workbooks, notebooks, and diaries the most interesting of which span the better part of three years of intense magical operations. One could argue quite convincingly that the revelations D and Kelly received during the Enochian period represent the cream de la cream of their magical workings and that it is unnecessary to waste our time on the painfully complex details of the Haptarchia and Logith working periods. After all, the G.D. Crowley system and techniques were developed from this plus ultra Enochian material, and everything seems to work just fine. Thank you. First, I became enthralled with the work of Clay Holden and the John D. Publication Project, which brought the glories of Quinty Library Mysterium to life on the World Wide Web. Then, in 2003, 
My OTO brother and at Nokian Magic Adept Christios Per sent me a computer disk of material from a marvelous Nokian seminar he presented in Pittston, Pennsylvania. Along with the seminar material, he sent me a collection of photographic files of surviving D manuscripts from the British Library and other materials that were of great interest to me. I assure you, I could not have created this course without these materials and the profound insights of this great modern magician. I must confess that even with this information stacked conveniently and legibly under my nose, I was overwhelmed by the sheer immensity of it all. I'm interested in the magical adventures of Dee and Kelly as much as the next fellow, but I also have a life. But we're not talking about driving cars, we're talking about the art of magic. In the final analysis, no matter what system the magician chooses, in order to make it work most effectively he or she must first become attuned to that system's particular way of viewing of the universe. This concept is so important to the understanding of what will follow in this course that I will pause to illustrate with an example. The ceremonial magician who practices Kabbalistic magic acquiesces to see all things in heaven and earth in terms of a hierarchy of spiritual personages expressed by the various god names, archangels, angels, spirits, intelligences, and demons of the system. In Kabbalah-based magic, such spiritual beings are conveniently organized and arranged according to fourfold formulas dictated by the Hebrew letters that make up the great name of God, yod heh vav -Heh, and by the familiar schema of the Tree of Life, with its ten sephiroth and the twenty-two paths that connect them. Like the ballerina whose 90 minutes on stage is the product of years of practice and thousands of hours of rehearsal, the magical artist must also be first transformed into a proper instrument of his or her craft. Magicians achieve this transformation with preliminary meditations and rituals, by which we adjust our focus step by step until we become comfortable citizens of the specific magical world in which we intend to operate. First the magician becomes master of the pentagram and a full citizen of the world of the five elements of the microcosmic universe. By repeated performances of the pentagram rituals and meditations, the magician's psyche becomes balanced and accustomed to the world of the four directional winds, the four elements, and the corresponding magical weapons, the wand, cup, sword, and disc. Once the elemental universe is mastered, the magician then moves on to the next step in the attunement process by mastering rituals of the hexagram. This is very basic stuff, but it illustrates how rituals enable the ceremonial magician to externalize internal processes and undergo self-transformation. Would-be magicians who attempt more advanced work without being adjusted by these early attunements are ill-prepared to understand or properly absorb what is happening to them within the context of the progressively higher magical environments in which they presumptuously wish to operate. Late in 2005, while gathering material for yet another workshop series on Enochian magic for my Monday Night Magic class, I pored over the records of Dee and Kelly's pre enochian workings in hopes of finding the key to their preparatory processes. What exactly did the angels do to Dee and Kelly during the years prior to the final Enochian revelations? Dee and Kelly received some pretty interesting things during those earlier workings including instructions for the creation of an array of magical implements that the Golden Dawn and Crowley but ignored, a layman, 
which was to be worn by the magician as a breastplate and which connects him or her to the holy table. The holy table itself, inscribed with letters from an angelic alphabet, and upon which would rest the Sigillium Deimoth, the Sigillium Deimoth, an intricately carved disc made of purified beeswax. After all, isn't that what magic is really about changes in the magician? Could these changes have been brought about by the mere act of meticulously following the angel's complex directions, which filtered and distilled these magical concepts into material manifestation? If so, this would be a vital preparatory step that modern Enochian magicians are omitting entirely. I grew intrigued with this idea. Given the fact that the G.D. Crowley methods of Enochian magic already work so well right out of the box, how much better might these same techniques work if the magician were first prepared and attuned in a manner similar to the way D. and Kelly had been prepared and attuned? I was at first uneasy with this theory because it came dangerously near to destroying my comfortable philosophy of don't try to duplicate the magic D and Kelly did to receive the system, just use the system they received. However, my inherent laziness was rewarded, and I eventually took comfort in the realization that in order to ceremonially prepare oneself to perform Enochian magic, one might not need to torturously repeat everything D and Kelly did to receive the ring, the holy table, the layman, the seven ensigns of creation, and the Sigillum Deimoth. Instead, one must simply understand and use the ring, the holy table, the layman, the seven ensigns of creation, and the Sigillum Deimoth that they received.